My name is Francis Jones. How are you? I'm Daya. And we're both running for social chair. So basically, as many of you know, directors of social affairs are people who work in planning and friendship games and another event just like Gauntlet, which is coming this weekend, by the way. Anyway, so <laughs> social affairs to me, though, isn't just those events. Social affairs to me is all about creating a community and a family and like something, being one, basically. Because we all need to socialize. <laughs> I know that's not funny, but let me get to some point. As many of you know, that we do have a low attendance problem. And we also do have a click problem too. Like, I'm gonna be honest, some people, I don't know their names. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here. And I just wanna fix that, you know? I just wanna be able to like, know everyone, actually be on a more than I basis, and like actually have a conversation with everyone. That would be my basic goal. And I think I can, I think I can achieve these goals because what qualifies me for this position is that I've been a vice president before for my art club back in high school. And I've also worked in my previous Filipino committee, which was PYC of Vallejo. And honestly, all those experiences have helped me to qualify for this position. Yeah. So going off of what Francis said, um, it's mainly about creating more of a family. Um, I know we already are a family, but like he said, there are a lot of clicks. And I would like to change that, like he said, um, to not be able to just say hi, but actually have a real conversation, not a, hey, bye, how you doing, and that's it. Like, have more than that. And so for that, I would also like to have more events where we can all socialize more, like barbecues, like sports on the weekends, movie nights, etc. Um, also community service, I know this semester it lacked a lot, so I would like to get that more in motion. And what qualifies me for this position was um, my senior year I was cheer captain, so that means I had to talk to other clubs for our own events. And I was also another club called um, Link Crew, if you guys know what it is. It's basically where all the freshmen have to go to the meetings and socialize with other freshmen, get to know the upperclassmen, and ask any questions that they have. And I was captain of that club, and that required me knowing 150 students all by myself and organizing, like, planning all the events for every meeting. So I do have experience with, like, talking to people. And you want to be social security? Yeah. Woo! 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 Right, first question goes to our social chairs. Alright. Alright, um, you know Friendship Games is very uh, energy, lots of energy. Are yeah. you guys able to bring about that energy to all the hundred people or so? Honestly, I think if you play your cards right, yes you can. I believe that we can do that. Like, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Dana and I kind of bounce off of each other's and stuff. Like, okay, you go. Yeah, you go. Um, I've done it before, like I said, running 150 freshmen. Like, I, I can handle it. Friends. So, at also Friendship Game related. Um, at Friendship Games, a lot of times you have to deal with um, your members not showing up to practices or meetings or even having to deal with um, refs that are being unfair to your team. Um, how would you deal with that sort of opposition? Like, um, uh, like, how would you deal with the situation? Well, earlier this year I had attended a meeting and there was the same situation with another position. And running from what Tevin said, actually, create incentives. So basically what I would do is I would create incentives for those people to come and start attending and start participating in what they're needing to do. But also with the unfair refs, honestly, you can't change them. <coughs> it's, it's their decision. You, can, you, really can. you can try to argue it, but if they're still not going, there's nothing you can do. I feel like it's one of those situations where you just have to um, be the bigger person and be like, okay, well, if this is the situation, we have to accept it, and if we can't change it, then we must move on and make it better for next time. Thank you. Just ask who's in charge. I'm sorry? Get their boss's name. Um, um, 
<laughs> okay, so um, this is coming from experience. So I was all uh, yeah, I was social chair, and I was a sophomore when I ran for it. Um, how do you plan? Oh, so you do plan on taking people to friends and family that are older than you that will think that they're above you. How do you plan to not really? How do you plan to assert your dominance in the sense that you know you're the one in charge and that you know? Well, I don't know how to say this nicely, but like show everybody that you like know what you're doing and have them put faith in you as a person or persons. That's honestly a really hard question. So, so you guys being sophomores next year, right? Yes. You will be running friendship games, gauntlet, gauntlet stuff like that, right? And you'll be having people in your community who are older than you. My question is, how do you plan on allowing these upperclassmen to have faith in you to know that you know what you're doing? I feel like that goes back to being like social and knowing people for like not just what they attend but their name and stuff and building those relationships to the point where you know like they know like hey you know like I'm social chair and this is what we do like you need to respect our decisions and go along with it because I know that sometimes when you talk to somebody who doesn't really know you they can get an attitude like well I don't even know you so why should I, I listen to you you know so building those relationships I feel like that would help a lot. Oh, Francis, do you have any? No, I'm good. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Um, Sabrina, do you have any? Oh, oh. Sabrina, do you have any? Yes, Sabrina. Alright, sorry. So, yeah, um, community service was lacking this semester. Um, we had no participation for uh, the community service that we were offering. How do you expect to um, like offer these uh, community service events and have people show up and do what they want to do, like using, as, as a club, like bringing them together and helping out the community. Well, community service is more, for me, is more about the social aspect other than the service aspect. The service is still there, but it's social, right? So my plan would be to just have a whole bunch of friends and just like create an incentive to make them want to come. Um, also, um, I mean, it's also about what your opinions are too, and if you guys can, I, I can ask you guys, what would you guys like to do for community service, you know, start a poll, and from there on, move on, but it's not just like about saying, oh, well, this is what we have, like actually asking the people what they would like to do, and do that. Uh, so you guys have been talking about uh, how you know some people in this room uh, that you don't know and how you are going to take it upon yourself to go out and meet all these people. That's great. Uh, me personally, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've had to learn the names of 150 people. But that's yourselves. How are you going to get people on this side of the room to know everybody on this side of the room? And I don't mean just having parties where, or like, get-togethers. <laughs> Because not everybody talks to everybody. So if you have an example, great. If you don't have one, that's fine. But how are you going to get everybody involved? Yeah. Icebreakers. 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 Okay, if you want to ask. Okay. I have a couple questions there. Thank you, guys. All right.